We are delighted to have you listen to Dr. Osbert Ajago Ministration. We are confident the same will help you navigate successfully issues of life and be heaven bound in the fullness of time. In Jesus' name. In the opening, let's turn to Matthew 6, verses 32 to 34. Can somebody read for me? Matthew 6, 32 to 34. May I yield myself to the teachings and speaking of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take over, take over, take over. Anoint my mouth with fire. Speak through me so that life will be changed. Life's here and every other person who who is going to be under the influence of this ministration. Let them know that there is God and God is our life. That our Lord Jesus Christ is Lord. And he will continue to be Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew 6, 32 to 34. Somebody should read fast. Why be like the pagans who are so deeply concerned about these things? Your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. And he will give you all you need from day to day if you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. You see, this teaches us something very, very potent. First, we have to remember that we are, we are dust. We came from dust. And dust with, we all return to. Though our spirit and soul will go to heaven and some people, of course, will go to hell. The simple analogy is that we should take worldly things simple. God, in his infinite mercy, has given us opportunity to like and tilt towards heaven goals. Heaven goals are the following. One, that we will live life in peace, who will prosper in health and in wealth. So we don't need to be too anxious about things. As a matter of fact, we should not be anxious for anything. We should seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Because he, he, he created us, he knew what we are made of, and he knows what we want. More often than not, coalition, fighting, quarreling, tribulation, and all that come because people are struggling for things. People are putting their head into anything to just make money, to live above board, and all that. I keep on telling people that one thing is certain. God did not give us ownership. No matter what you struggle in this life, you can't own it. That's why I keep on telling people when they say, do you own this? I say, I don't own anything. That's the truth. Because ownership means perpetually is yours. But nobody was born with anything. And nobody is leaving this earth with anything. The best you can live with will be the clothes you are going to wear. And probably they'll give you 10 10 rings, gold, good gold on top of your neck and all that. But guess what? The amount of gold they put on you when you are being put to rest will determine the amount, number of armed robbers that will come and dig up the grave. So what is it? That statement, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul, is very potent. Very, very, very potent. If only we realize that we don't own anything, that we, we, are given to, we are given by God to manage. All this raging, all this fighting, all this quarreling will be useless because it's not worth it. How many years do, do you have on earth? The maximum number of years you can live now on earth is 120 years. At the end, you are buried. And that ends the whole wealth, the whole property, the whole thing you've been fighting for. So is it worth it is a question. The only thing you can accomplish is God's purpose for you. If, if, even if you don't accomplish it, you won't go with anything. So the earlier we realize this and have it in, in our head, the better. Every year, every day, people are being killed for what reason? Wealth. People are struggling. I'm not saying people should not struggle. But remember that God gives rest to his people. 
to his servant. Mm -hmm. So is he, is he really worth it? People kill themselves for religious purpose. People kill themselves for want of wealth. People kill themselves for one thing or slightest provocation. I don't think that is right. It's not worth it. What is worth it is seek first the kingdom of God. That you show that your soul is going somewhere. A thousand years on earth is less than one minute in eternity. Why can't we tilt towards God? Why must we keep on tilting towards the devil? Devil, we know, comes to do three things to steal our joy, to kill our joy, and to destroy our joy. And we are lucky that Lord Jesus Christ came and sacrificed his blood for our sake for two reasons to give us life and life in abundance. So if we have life, that name, that word, life in abundance, is beyond religious. It's not just life you live 24 hours. It includes life after death. That is life in abundance. You can't have life in abundance on earth. You can only have life. But the abundance means in, in, in this term, the mansions in heaven. Will you, are you aspiring to own one mansion? Or are you aspiring to own the whole world? And when you die, you are, you are, you are, you are, they will even know where you are going. Besides, people say they, they go to Pogatu. There's nothing like Pogatu. The Bible says it's appointed for man to die once and after with judgment. There is no repentance in, in death at all. In the graveyard, you are dead, you are dead. And that, unfortunately, is inevitable. Every living soul must perish one day. But where do you go? Where, do you, where will your soul go? Will your soul be received by God or by devil? Let's not deceive ourselves. In heaven, you may know each other, but everybody is equal. Except if you win souls, and that will take you to the next level, next realm. And you know one thing, like I always say, God has hidden three things from us. When we are going to pass on, where we are going to pass on, and how we are going to die. But whether we are dying or not, is inevitable. So, it's not worth it. Why do we seek the kingdom of God first? You're going to have peace. You're going to have good sound, good health. You're going to have everything in your calling. And you should not forget that you can't fight this battle alone. The world itself is full of hatred, full of malicious content, full of envy, full of acrimony and all that. People fighting each other, struggling. You have unfriendly friends who will tell you if you believe in them, they will come back and disappoint you. So what is this life after all? I'm not saying that we should aspire to die, no. But whether you like it or not is the, is the truth. You must pass on to someday. I tell people that no matter how your husband or your wife or your child profess he loves you, the day you pass on, he, he or she won't sleep in the same room with you. As a matter of fact, if he or she sees you in her dream or his dream, he will call the whole pastors to cast you away. So what is love after all? Why is on earth if you, if you put your property careless, the nearest person will take it and kill you? I once read a book where somebody said he loves his friend, but he's going to kill him. And went ahead and killed him. What kind of love is that? That is satanic love. So what do we pursue that is beyond righteousness of God? Nothing. As far as I'm concerned, you need to continually renew your mind for every day on a daily basis. Because you may finish stealing, you may finish killing somebody, you may finish doing, acquiring all the wealth, God will just take your soul. It's not our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I said, God does not give ownership at all. Nobody owns anything. No matter how rich you say you are, the moment you die, another person will take over. Before you are even buried, they will tear apart the whole thing, share the whole thing. And, you know, uh, uh, there was a plot of land, for instance, my friend bought somewhere. And there was a lot of crisis. People bought different, different they sold to different people. My friend met Oba and said, Oba, we bought this land from you. How come different people are claiming access to his ownership? He said, nobody owns anything. That the land is there. If you anytime you go, you see the land, you can't carry the land. So that shows you that we are, we are just dust. And dust we shall remain as long as this creation is concerned. Mm. But more than dust, where will your soul go? Because your soul will be the only representative you have. And of course, that is spirit. It will go either to hell or to heaven. 
and that's where the joy, enjoyment starts or suffering continues. How do we do it? What do we do? Since he created us, he knows what we need. I've said that. He knows what gives us pleasure and happiness. Unfortunately, what the earth, what the human being, what human being defines as pleasure is, to say the least, unfortunate criminology. It's criminally minded, lost, L-O-L-U-S-T, and all that. This does not, all these do not constitute pleasure. Because it, all of them still ends up to ethnic condemnation. That's why we have to renew our minds continually. Every morning we wake up, we say, Daddy, thank you for making us sleep and wake up. Besides, when you sleep, you are dead. When each time you sleep, every night you are dead. You don't know who, who wakes you up. You don't wake up yourself, even if you set alarm. Something in you will wake you up, even if the alarm is there. That's why some people will put on an alarm, they won't even wake up. What who wakes you up? Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says he's a quickening spirit. He's a quickening spirit. And if he believes you, that is the end of you. So is it worth it that we keep on struggling, killing each other, meaning tribes for religious sake and all that? It's not worth it. We should think in depth, in the, we should think and reconsider the things we think, do or carry out because every soul will be judged accordingly. How do we, let's take some examples. How do we go about living righteous life? You know, because we said we enjoy ourselves and all that. I was asking some people, I said, is it possible to live a day without sinning? I agree that the Bible said all have sinned and conscious of God's glory. That is the truth. And we sin daily. But if we walk in spirit, if we walk in spirit, which is towards targeting the righteousness of God, he, he, he who is able will help us navigate well. If you wake up, you say, God, give me the ability to win at least one soul today. Then you are thinking faculty. Your action and inaction will tilt towards that direction. Whatever you profess, you get. Whatever you say, that's why we say that word has power. Every spoken word has power. If you wake up, you say, God, give me the ability not to sin today. Give me the ability to win at least one soul today. Everything will start working towards that direction. Whatever you think, as a man thinks, so it is. If you think, today I'm going to kill people, you start, everything around you will start working towards that direction. So we have to sanctify our minds, beg the Holy Spirit to guide us, and live, ensure we live Holy Spirit life. Because that is the only way to gain righteousness of God. And of course, God is a reward of those who diligently seek Him. Whatever you pray, whatever you ask of Him to do, He will do it. No wonder He told Moses that He is, I am that I am. Meaning that whatever you say He is, he, that's what He is to you. If you say He is he's, 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 he's not capable of answering your prayers, He won't answer your prayers. That's where faith comes into being too. So it is possible to live a life of righteousness. It is possible to change oneself. It, no matter the sin you may have committed, no matter the atrocity you may have committed, simple prayer, God forgive me. He is a, he is a forgiving God. He will forgive you. And of course, you tilt towards that because you have right to choose between death and life, between bad and good. And of course, you beg the Holy Spirit to beg to lead you towards good only. That's why we say, footsteps of the righteous are ordered by God. You can't order it without you giving him the opportunity to do that. So if you desire to be righteous, you will be righteous. And that's it. There's no way the devil comes. The devil does not have power to do anything. Because it takes power, it takes power, it takes permission from God to do anything. So when the devil comes, you rebuke him, you say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. He will, he will, he will, he will run away from you. That will be a portion in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you remember Abraham, I like him a lot because of one thing. He is a father of faith. And he is a father of believers. He, we know his story. When he was 99 years, he was promised that he's going to have a son who will have the whole nation come from him. The promised child. The same child was taken, was asked to be taken to be slaughtered. He, he hearkened to the word of God, which is seeking the righteousness of God. He was, as he was about to sacrifice him, God said, stop. 
that tested his feet and God said, in blessing, I will bless you. Not only that, I will bless all those who bless you and curse all those who curse you. And throughout the Bible, apart from Lord Jesus Christ, he is said to be a friend of God. God will come down and two of them will be talking. May we have unlimited access to God in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God become and continually become our friend in the name of, our friend in the name of Jesus. Amen. Israelites were promised they would go to their promised land. It took them a long time to get there, but God kept his faith. He kept his word. And that is why God will keep on keeping his word in our direction in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have to be proactive. We already know what God wants. Starting off it is usually difficult, very difficult. But if you focus, on what God has told you, revealed to you, which is righteousness. If any, if any voice tells you to do evil, know that is not God. That is not promise of God. God is not capable of doing evil. He's, he's God. He's God. He, as a matter of fact, the Bible says he, he opposes the kingdom of God and the earth by his righteousness, by his equity. He who comes to equity comes with clean hands. And that's why he can't tolerate sin. Anything sin. Anything that raises its head above the knowledge of God, above the prophecy of God, above the injunction and word of God is to say the, land, the least obnoxious and deadly as well as evil. Whenever you have evil thought to do anything that is contrary to the will of God, cast it down because the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers. So, and you have the power to cast anything down because it starts from the mind. If you leave it, it will develop, and before you know it, it becomes a sin. You, you will be attracted to do it. I tell people that you don't teach children to sin, but you teach children to do righteousness. That tells you that devil, do powerless, but is influencing our minds continually. Mm -hmm. And we should reject it by force, by fire. That's why the Bible says, flee from all appearances of evil. Flee. You don't wait. If, if the fact that you, you have God, Within your soul does not mean if you see Ambrobas, you go and say, Ambrobas, I am a child of God. That is tempting God Himself. And that's not what the Bible teaches us. We should be we should be mindful of what we do. We should be mindful of the association we keep. We should be mindful of people we interact with. We should be mindful of what we read, see, watch in terms of video and all that. Because these are the things that can weigh your time. Have you ever thought a situation where the moment you do evil? Your power comes down. You become too weak. You become, you, you devil will now start telling you more evils to do. It's difficult to come back. So what do you do? You set your mind from day one. Immediately you wake up and say, like I like, I said before, God, make me not to sin today. Let me have your favor from all angles. Let the earth work in favor of you. If you're in Canada, you say, Anywhere you are, you say, let things, let the world, let your, this country work for you towards your goal. Because everything on earth is, even though dead, has a way of hearing the word of God. That's why God himself, in the person of Jesus Christ, caused the victory and he tried off. You can speak to your house, you can speak to your food, you can speak to your furniture, reject anything that is evil. And when they come, it will, it will be rejected. They, they, they were once living. Everything on earth, the mansion, the plastic you see, everything was one uh, alive. The plastic you see were made from rubber. Everything, wood, was once living. And as long as God is God, Jesus is Lord, they will listen to him because he created them and for a purpose. So it's a portion when you feel bad, when you feel alienated, when you feel uh, 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 alone, when you feel you've been rejected, you start speaking the word. You start speaking the word. You start speaking the word. You start taking charge. You start taking charge. And that's why, because otherwise they will eat you up. But if you take charge, say to yourself, repeat the, God, the godly things, weddings, promises of God, and they will come to pass. You invite the Holy Spirit. He is always there by your side to help you. He's a helpmate. So it is possible for us to live righteous life. And I charge us to do so in Jesus' name. Amen. We need the guiding of the Holy Spirit. We need Him. Jesus is there. He told us that he, where He was going, that He won't leave us alone. 
but he will give send a help meet a helper that will quicken our mortal body and remind remind us of his weddings at the appropriate time. If you if you desire to be righteous, you will be desire you be righteous. And that will be our portion going forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. Once you believe it, it will come to pass. Amen. What what keeps you happy in the world won't be keeping you happy again. Because you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. You'll be filled with happiness. Even when you don't eat, even when you don't have money to eat, you'll be filled and you won't be hungry. That happened to because God Himself knows what we need. We don't have to remind him or do evil in order to get it. He is can permit me to use the word blesser of those who desire it, who deserve it, and all that. That will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. For more information and prayer requests, feel free to email us at pentiumministries at gmail.com. Thank you.